Hello. Hello. Yes, so Rami is in the room, so the, it means we can get started because no, maybe you don't know, I didn't even know it, I only found out like one hour ago, but uh, Flambia sponsored this talk. Now, now, that's what you do now, like you sponsor talks as a company, that's, that's the future, maybe it's, yeah, enough streaming, no, no games, no stuff, so that's maybe, you know, an idea for the future to sponsor talks. You can sponsor me earlier than the day before next time. Yes, yes. Um, our mystery guest is, maybe you should have come with a mask, you know, like mystery guest and then take away the mask, yeah, reveal. Um, the one and only, <laughs> you can do that. The one and only Devine uh, Lul in Vega. It's Devine, right? I think everybody says Devine, but I, saw, I, I used to say that as well. Then I, I learned last month that it's Devine Lul in Vega. And uh, all the way from uh, Montreal. And it was a bit of a uh, last minute thing. And uh, like, uh, they also invited me a bit last minute. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, Sosowski was supposed to host uh, this track. Uh, then he had a small accident, so they asked me uh, on Monday if I could uh, uh, replace him. And, uh, and I was pretty proud, you know, because they asked me on Monday, they said, can you come uh, to Utrecht on Friday? And I was, yeah, sure, you know, and I was pretty proud of myself because I'm, I'm based in Berlin and I said, okay, you know, I can just decide to do this thing, you know, last minute. But then they asked uh, Devine on uh, Wednesday if you could come to Utrecht from Montreal, Canada, and five hours later you were here. And uh, I don't know how you did it. And I, I don't even know if it's legal. Is it legal? Can you come like just like that from Canada? Can you? Um, well, if you, if you work from home, yeah. Okay, if you work from home, you can just... Uh, yeah, I was like, yeah. Okay, we, we won't tell the police or anyone. And... Um, Yes, so, uh, Devine, you do, you do all sorts of things. You, you, you code, you make games, yeah, applications, interactive stuff. You're, you build your own tools, which is what you're going to talk about. You, you invented your own language. You speak, you, you speak Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> but what, okay, but, well, maybe we're going to find out how you do it, because I want to know, I want to learn from you, you know. I want to be like you. When I grow up, I want to be like you. Okay, big applause for Devine. Thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, so, so, like you were saying, um, I'm Mr. Mystery Guest. I was invited uh, just yesterday. Um, oh, do you want to close the door? Yeah, you, you can also use the other mic. I like this. I like this one. I like, I, I like this one. Um, more, more than this one. All right. So. Um, so yeah, it's my first time in the uh, Netherlands, and I was uh, promptly invited by uh, Remy to uh, talk to you about things that I like doing, and um, kind of like go over some of the projects that I've done in the past, which are pretty broad. Like just by a ra raise of hand, like who here is most in interested in audio? I, I know you, you are, but so maybe one one fifth. Of, okay, and mo mostly visual, like visual artists, and a half. And programmers, I like that. It's it's a lot of visual programmers and audio programmers, I suppose, since you have a crossovers. And uh, I come from a visual background, and I moved into programming. Uh, I have a bunch of friends who came from programming and discovered that the extent of programming was very artistic. And for me, slow is coming the other way around. Um, I'm going to speak about three main projects that I've built uh, that touch a bit of everything. So it's a lot of visual stuff, a lot of design stuff, and uh, all of this is also tied with the uh, audio aspect. Um, I do some video game stuff, but I'm not gonna re be talking about video games. It's gonna be more about uh, developing tools to ha that allows me to make video games. Uh, so let's get started. So the two main tools I'm gonna talk about, one is the language I created. Uh, like, I know uh, the <laughs> nuclear tron uh, has its own language, and uh, I was very in interested by uh, this aspect of a conline where you you can uh, inject culture into a project by creating its, its language. Um, I created a time tracking tool that I think I'm, most people know me for this. It's like a, the way I go about making my projects is kind of unique, I suppose. And uh, I created a, a sort of wiki to keep track of everything that, I'm, that I know. So like one project that I started when I was, well, pretty young, I suppose, was that I wanted to create this wiki that would be everything that I know. So 
try to picture this, but is, uh, it was an interesting project, now I'm gonna go over this. So, um, so uh, like Lorenzo said, uh, I currently live in Montreal. I lived in, in Tokyo for a while, and uh, well, if you, know, if you do video games, you know, you'll notice that you kinda like, the concept of home kinda get fuzzy after a while because you always fly everywhere, and uh, uh, I, I can't, like even though I, I'm staying at, at Montreal now, now, I'm hardly ever there. Um, this is uh, my workstation in Tokyo. I, was <laughs> I had a nice place on Odaiba, if you've been there. If you've been there. Uh, this is my girlfriend that inspires me and with whom I collaborate. And one of my favorite thing in the world is biking, so um, that brings me around quite a bit. Uh, I also host some, a cooking blog and other like miscellaneous things. Uh, I make beer and uh, I also like to travel to try beer and this brings me around the world quite a bit and I lo love that. So if you want to talk about beer later, you can join me. Um, in, in, in Tokyo, one thing I liked was to uh, beat Japanese people at uh, Blast Blue and Guilty Gear. Um, and uh, I'll just quickly, like who know exactly nothing I've done or I've never seen any of my work? Okay, cool. So otherwise I was gonna, I was just, just skip this, this part. But um, so this is some of the works I've done in the past. Um, like there are, two games in there, but it's mostly gonna be uh, more utilities because um, the way I go about making projects is is I make, I solve problems by games or apps. So when I was in Tokyo, I had to learn Japanese for work, so I made myself a le Japanese learning tool and that really well, that worked really well. And right now I'm port like uh, I'm studying Japanese, so I'm bringing, uh, I'm, I'm learning Russian, sorry, and I'm adding Russian onto this tool so I can learn Russian. So I, I find programming for me, really helped me solve like almost any problem that I had. Um, this is one game I made that I never released. Uh, the idea was that you would find a f like the game plays like you open uh, someone else's phone and yeah, you have a, its a desktop or like it looks like a Palm Pilot and you can go through this person's email and you have to figure out this thing. And uh, I realized that someone else made a game like Christine Love made something so similar that I was like, oh fuck this, you know. So I abandoned it. Um, this is the, the first game I did. Uh, I made it while, while I was in Tokyo. It's a game that has no language, it's black and white. And um, the idea is, it's kind of like a mist thing and it plays with the idea of language. You're stuck in a world that has uh, no English, not even in menus. So it's like, when I was in Tokyo, my experience was that I was completely lost all the time. So I made this game that was like, emitting, like projecting this, this idea. Um, it had some traction and made me discover uh, a lot of really nice folks in, in, in the scene. Like for me, I was there was all of this was very really foreign. Like peop, that, the idea that people were making small games. So. Uh, I made a drawing app on iOS. That I, I made it mostly for me, so I could do things on the road. And uh, like everything else, usually I made for me, and then eventually I release it. And I'm always a bit surprised that other people have like uh, are also interested in these projects. But also, uh, I think uh, in, inspires me to like uh, meet other people also that are like-minded, which I always try to, to find. Because sometimes I, f I find myself a bit, m mostly on iOS, I find myself really misrepresented. I look at the App Store and it's all like Angry Birds and shit like that and I'm really not interested in stuff like that. So I'm thinking if I'm gonna make stuff like ver that are very personal, somebody somewhere is gonna be like, oh yeah, finally, it's like not, not more Angry Birds shit. Um, I made myself a keyboard for iOS that I use every day for, I, that I find is more efficient than the one that comes with the phone, so it's like, that's another way of solving problems. Uh, I work from home, so every day at three o'clock, uh, I take naps, and I made myself an app, an app to help me regular, like uh, plan and uh, regularize my naps, <laughs> just a small thing. I make a lot of apps that are just like toys that have no purpose, but are just really nice to look at, and uh, I make them as screensavers or things like that, so this is one, this is another one. Um, most of my games projects deal with language, like the one I showed you before that has that was dealing with a world that had no text at all. This one is just text, well, almost mostly text and procedural interaction with, uh, it's like a dating sim a little bit, and that had some interesting traction, which uh, brought me, I guess, I, I think the first time I heard about you, Remy, it was because of the release of that game. Um, that's a, a, one of the first uh, language learning apps that I made and now it has Hebrew, Arabic, Korean, a bunch of, like, 
Inuit and other things. It's so I can study in the train and I always like to have like time killers. I'm not so much in a gamer on my phone. I'm really more in, uh, like uh, have like Wikipedia uh, all the way, all, like open all the time and, uh, and I use like little language learning tools like that. Uh, I also draw once in a while. I don't draw, I don't draw as much anymore, but uh, it's always been a big part of my work. Like uh, it's nice to be able to de develop a game full stack. So like I, have a, I can have an idea and bring it to completion through music, art, and programming. And so I just want to show you like some illustration I've done in the past. Always like has this kind of like black and white uh, anime thing. I guess I released uh, a bunch of books. Also, I'm really interested in in print uh, design. Um, and the books I released are as cryptic, I guess, as the games I've made, and they all have like their really weird uh, procedural, uh, illustrative kind of feel. So, like this book, if you cycle through it, it makes like an animation of text, and uh, so yeah, that's that's a thing. Um, more illustrations. I'm really interested in photography and like uh, weird uh, uh, hacking stuff. Like right now, I have a radio station in Montreal, like a pirate radio station node in Montreal that broadcasts weird number station stuff 24 seven. So like taxi drivers who pass by my house or in my neighborhood and they like they just, if they just so happen to like tune their radio, then there's this weird like industrial gabber thing that just like <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that starts, you know, as they pass by, which I think is, is kind of neat. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, like I hacked my phone, I used a, I made a super crazy macro, uh, macro lens for it. Um, this is more print stuff. Uh, oh yeah, I made a, one game I, I made uh, on iOS. I released it on, on paper as a choose your own adventure thing, as a side project. And it was sim surprisingly simple to port the code to choose your own adventure. I made a text, like an Objective-C parser to choose your own adventure. And that, that was interesting. I made some toys as well in the past, so, uh, and jewelry and other things. So I dabble in a bit of everything. This is mountains. I like doing mountains and faces. <laughs> All right, so um, my, oh yeah, one, one thing that's kind of like a fun fact is I, I made this uh, slideshow program because I, I really didn't like Google Docs uh, slideshow tool. So yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna, I would like to introduce you to the language I made. I'm not gonna talk to you about how it like the, the semantics or the, the grammar or the syntax, but just the concept of making a language for me, that was really interesting. That was one of the first projects I started. I made this when I was 16 or 15, and uh, it was more like a toy. Uh, you know, like when you're 15, you don't really know any, about any of the, the language wars or even like the WORF hypothesis and all these things. You can, you, you, like I approached this with a completely um, innocent mind and uh, it, it brought me some good things. Uh, so. I, well, in, uh, the idea was that I was trying to make a language that would reflect the culture of a world that I've created. And to do that, it was nice to kind of like, if you, like for instance, I, I don't think language can influence thought because it follows culture, but when you're gonna create a language, you have to work it the other way around. So it was nice to uh, create a language without having cultures, uh, without having a culture yet. And then like uh, that influence, that ended up influencing the world a lot. So I think like if you're gonna do some lore or like backstory stuff, if you, if you create a language, then that will kind of like put you in a situation where you have to think how the characters would think using that language and that will create some lore like on its own. So that's, that's interesting. Um, s some of the inspiration I had for that was like the Voynich. Voynich is like a, a, a cryptic book somebody made with a, light, not a lot of nice little illustrations. It's covered with text, it has this nice, attribute to it that um, the text never changes. You know, like for conlang, if, if somebody just decided to make a conlang and wrote like 600 pages of it, like in, at the end, it would, like this person would be much better uh, at writing it than in the beginning. So you could see like a progression, but Voynich has this thing where like it seems that the person who wrote this has been writing that, that language for ages before because the language just doesn't really change. And that's one thing that I, I liked because it was consistent. So. That kind of got me into programming in some ways because I was trying to write parsers to figure out patterns in, the in, in this alphabet when I was younger. So that taught me PHP, I suppose. Don't, don't learn PHP. Um, the, when I created the language, I didn't know that there were gonna be so much 
uh, of it in my games and my project in the future, but uh, at that point, I, had, I was starting to have an idea that um, if people spoke this language, then they would think a certain way, and that shaped a lot of my projects for the future. Um, so I guess now everything that I do kind of like uh, gravitates around the, the ideas of that language, even though I'm like, you know, this it's been years, like more than 10 years now that I've done that, my work still reflects uh, the core concept of, the, of, of that language. And uh, all of my visual kind of like go back to these same ideas. Almost now I feel like it kind of like influenced me and had me thinking in that, in that alphabet, like through these alphabets and through this language for a while now, enough that in, that it, every day I just kind of like emanates this, this language. Um, so this is one illustration I made that kind of show the way I see it is like it helps me build new words that don't exist in English to fill in blanks that I, that I need to express. And this is what it looks like. Um, it's very concise. It's a bit like, uh, it, like a bit like Chinese. It's very agglutinative and modular. Um, so this is more of it. I, I, for a while, I was trying to make it into a programming language because I felt it was like it had some interesting axioms I could use to um, feed into uh, parsers. Uh, this is uh, the, nine, the 27 axioms, and this is just like the way some syntax works, but that's not so relevant. Um, I have like a, um, this, well, I have this wiki I'm gonna mention it later, but uh, I have a, also a chat room where uh, everyone that goes there greets themselves with this language, so it started to create a kind of like, I guess people who are influenced by my work and, it, and always end up like getting lost on my wiki and they ended up on the documentation for this language, and now they're like trying to like send me emails in that language and this kind of interaction, which I absolutely love. Like one of the nicest things that I, somebody sent me was in that language, and it kind of like changed the way I saw Conlang afterward because um, it really felt like this person couldn't really just send that email in English. It had to be through that language, and that was amazing. Somebody wrote an, like a, a part of an opera in that in that language, which I, I think I, I like. Uh, there's a French metal band who has a song in that language. Um, so, oh yeah, like um, I didn't say, but I, um, I do a lot of music. Uh, I was playing in Berlin just uh, two or three weeks ago. Uh, my music is highly influenced and also all the lore and the story, the backstory of the, of the songs are written and uh, like portray the culture of the language. So uh, this is how I write my notes. It's, uh, um, yeah, so th I think that's enough about the language because I'm gonna run out of time. Uh, okay, so uh, while the language was the first tool I built, I built it without really knowing that much about programming, and it was without knowing it was really it was programming at, at its core. It was uh, interfacing with uh, concepts that, ha like, I needed like a, a tool to have an to have, like I, I needed the middleman for the, the, the things I wanted to build, and. Much later, I developed, uh, I started doing more programming. I learned Ruby and uh, I started to look into time tracking tools to, s well, well, just to schedule my time and to see patterns in my work. Um, I was really not happy with everything that was out there. Like, like every, most of the time, I'm most, not, I'm, most of the time, I'm not happy with what's out there and I ended up making it, like this uh, slideshow tool, I guess. Um, and um, what started as just like a time tracking tool grew in one of the most interesting thing for me ever is um, I was tr trying to compare biorhythms and uh, uh, creativity. So some days I would be really creative, some days I, would, I wouldn't, and I, I was thinking that, that can't be random, that has to be a pattern. There's no reason why I, some days I would feel just shit and some days I would feel good. So uh, using biorhythms uh, curves or analysis, I just started mapping the days that I was feeling really good and then what what triggered these events. And after that, I had enough data, like over time, I had enough data to make it so I would never have downtime. And that made it so people started questioning how I was so productive, but just because it's, it's from beating the, the white pages day, well, the days where you have no inspiration, that I get to be, that I get to create so much, I think. And I try to inspire other people to do the same. I think a lot of people would like s benefit from this. It's, but it's not just building a tool. It's also like, uh, in the beginning, I was missing tools as basic as like some days where I couldn't be creative. I was approaching it the wrong way. So like, if you're doing visual, like, and you you're gonna have a pass, you're gonna have a time where you can't just output all the time. You need to either input or change medium. 
So learning music really helped me fill in these blanks because while I couldn't be productive in illustration, my brain was still pretty awake to make uh, audio stuff and vice versa. And then feeding uh, programming into that, like it ended up filling all the blanks. And now I I'd hardly ever have downtime. So that's, that's the thing. Uh, I really suggest that you should try it. And there's a bunch of tools out there, but like just the process of making it is really a big part of like improving your efficiency. Um, so this is what my time looks. Well, I, ha I have like many ways of visualizing of, of looking at this data, but this is one that I like a lot. It's just the past five years, I think, and um, it shows how much time I invest uh, in all of these sectors, so like audiovisual and, and programming. And um, in the beginning, it's pretty erratic, but eventually we see like these curves like this, and this is pretty good for me to know when I'm going to have a, down a downtime of program. Like the black lines are programming, so. I know that like, af like after a while, if I just pu keep pushing, I kind of like, um, I start to go in a loop or I, I start improving, so I need to change medium. So having a way of visualizing it is super important for me. And tracking all this data gives me, act gives me some knowledge on things that um, I wouldn't normally know. Like there's this project that I've been keeping with me, like I work on every year. It's like a text MMO thing. And um, sometimes I'm like, oh, it's just a, a side project. But then at the end of the year, when I look at my timetable and it's like the project that I spent 300 hours on, I'm like, oh shit, it's not just a side project, it's like my main project. I just didn't see it uh, at the time because it just felt like, oh, now we're here, now we're there, like when I come back from uh, like, you know, at night or whatever. And um, so be able to see it kind of like once in a while gives me uh, hints on what I should be doing instead of what I'm actually doing. So I always have a, acts as a compass. So building a tool like this for me was like a big thing. Also, I have all these way of, of looking at my, I guess the highlights of my years. So like sometimes I'm like, oh, when, when did I make this album or when did I go there or travel there? So I have this data to, to look back to. Um, not having this, it feels like time is just sipping away. Like I'm so, I'm really sad that I didn't start earlier I would have much more data to you to find patterns from, and also there are th days that I have, I have no idea what I did, and this this is the saddest thing for me because you don't really, I can't really go b backward now. Um, this is a thing that I like a lot also that you might have seen other people do. It's uh, I think I took that from a game designer. He has uh, uh, two jars. One in one jar, it's filled with marbles of uh, ten different colors, and uh, every every color there's fif uh, fifty-two marbles of that color, so uh, one jar started empty, and then what he did is every week he'd take a marble from one jar and then drops it into the other. So after a while, like the jars kind of like go like this, and, and I think now he's like 60, he's a pretty old game designer, and you see that the jars are like, like right now he's like go t taking from the, 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 the almost empty jar and putting it to uh, the other jar, and that gives him a sense of like its mortality and like when it, when you can start thinking about like, you know, like right now, this is this is where I am, and I'm I'm thinking like, okay, well, I have this much lucidity left, and what can I, what can I do with this, and like, how am I gonna how am I gonna invest that? Uh, being able to see this and filling filling in that small black square every week is a bit morbid, and but at the same time, it's also very uh, enlightening, and it makes me it keeps me kind of like motivated. It's like it's a bit like having a stick with a carrot at the, at the end, which I like. Um, uh, so all of these tools that I, well, all these time tracking stuff, uh, it's, it's built on top of a software arch architecture I built a few years ago, and um, now it's like, it's a wiki, but it's it's also a time tracker, but it's also my my project website. It's also a way to I, I interact with people, and all and now it also has an MMO inside of it, and also has like you know it's, it's this kind of like this this place this playground that I've built all my stuff on the radio stations in there, like it's. It's this, this this core system that knows almost everything I know and everything that I've done. And uh, the idea is that it's kind of like this transhumanism thought that I could take this when I die and just like uh, guess at who I would keep being if I didn't die, like create a kind of like a undying self and have it maybe like become a Twitter bot that will just like keep creating stuff since like it has so much data. So having like keeping track of stuff is kind of nice because you can think about stuff like that. Um, had this 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 wiki system. In the beginning, I was like, 
you know, when Wiki started, Wikipedia started, I was like, oh, it's nice, I can add all the, 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 the my favorite artists on Wikipedia and all my Wiki edits, I think now, are, they have all been gone because Wiki is really strict about like what it can keep track of, but if you, if you make your own, you have your own rules and then like you can keep track of things that for other people seems irrelevant, but for you means a lot. So while it has all this data about like the lore of my music, the lore of the games and all this statistical data, um, like it, it can scale up to anything that I, can, that I will become and uh, that I think is quite important. Like it changes from just having a blog and like when you try to see who you were, like I remember like uh, when I started logging my, my stuff, I had to go back on a live journal and I, I, I was like, oh, live journal is a terrible platform for like, keeping track of like who you were and what I was doing because I have to seep through all the, like uh, all this, I couldn't write English at all. So I had to go through all this like shit to find what I was doing actually. So, um, you know, developing systems that let you do that is kind of nice. Um, so this is what the homepage of the wiki looks like. Um, it has like a dictionary aspect to it of everything that I know and most of it is names that might not, need, that, that might not mean anything to you but means a lot for me. So my work has a lot to do with uh, creating new words for the things that it, uh, I created or things that I couldn't find a name for. Um, so that's, that's, yeah, so that's that. Okay, so I have a bit of time for one last thing and I have only one slide for it but I think I can go over it for, for a bit. Um, so this is uh, one game I created that I felt was kind of relevant to this, uh, this event because most of the stuff I presented is nothing game related but it's all tools that I, I felt were kind of like could help you make the things that you want to make. Like all my game stuff is on my wiki. It's all, it's all on there. Like this, you can find it on there but it's the things that I've spoken to you today is not really well written or well documented as of now. And this game is really hard to read on to, but if I explain it to you, I think it'll make sense. So this is a text MMO thing. If you, if you, are aware, if you know what a MUD is, like, MUV, like a multi-user dungeon uh, text adventure, then you, you, you might, see, might see some similarities. This is a game that I created that, that was playing with the idea that people were, were sel selfless. Um, I didn't like the idea in MMOs that you were like growing a sort of ego and that you were, you were like becoming someone. So my idea was that, okay, I'll take that away from people. Uh, I didn't want people to like be someone. I just wanted to be, a peop I just wanted people to be a force of, of, that just moves things around. So everyone interacts with each other this way. And uh, so the way, the, the way the game works is very simple. You, you, you go in the game and you can't do anything except create something. So, so if I were to start the game now, I would say like, okay, you're a ghost and you're in paradise, you see a, a library. And then at this point, you can't enter the library, you need to create something, so it'll create a cat. So creating a cat lets you become the cat so you can move the cat around. So now you act as a cat. And this aspect was very important for me. I didn't want people to have a, a, a user accounts because then for something like this, it would create a lot of noise, a lot of uh, graffiti, people trying to destroy, destroy things. But if you're just like, uh, this omniscient force uh, in the world, then people would create nice things. Well, 4chan got a hold of this, and that didn't go so well. But, <laughs> but in most in most cases, it was like it, th that worked really well. It has a chat system, so you don't really s speak as a, as a user. You speak as a thing. So, like, if you're a chair, then that it will say just like a chair says something. And, and that, was that was interesting because people started creating vessels that would represent them. So we have like one of the most active users called Iron, just like the metal. And, and through, like, through Iron, like through this vessel, he created, I, I don't know, like 10,000 vessels in, like, in the world, 10,000 locations that anyone can visit, program, like programs and, and, and toys and things that people can play with. And nobody really knows who he is. Like, like Leia Alexander was playing for quite a while, and and uh, it took me a while to figure out who she was. She was playing as a as a love cafe, and um, and and that was interesting. So, so you have you have like all these, you, you don't have personality, you don't have ego, and people don't try to uh, to promote their own stuff. They're just trying to like visit, create, and uh, I think it's an interesting message on internet culture. Like when you're not 
a Twitter, like not, when you're not a Twitter ego, you can kind of like be a really, like you can be a force of good, I think. I mean, even when 4chan took over Paradise, that was kind of nice. Like, I mean, I, there was there were a lot of people trying like, you know, create, create mother and then create dick and like trying to make machines with them and, and but but uh, it, it was kind of like self-correcting because there were so much people, so many people trying. I mean, okay, so in the game, if you're gonna if you're gonna create a dick, then you're gonna be the dick, right? <laughs> so so it, it has this kind of like self-reflecting image to it. So people are like, oh god, what have I done? And and you know. <laughs> So the game has grown for, for the past five years. Now it has uh, 100,000 locations that people can visit, and it's just, uh, the game is called Paradise. It's pretty hard to find, but like, if, you dig, dig, if you dig deep enough in my website, you'll find it, and you'll find a bunch of people who are playing, and it's an interesting place. Uh, I, I think it's one of the most interesting projects I've made. There's no way for me to monetize this, because it's like uh, user created, completely user-created. A lot of it's the whole project is open on, on GitHub, and so many people have sent pull like pull requests now that there's no way that I can ever like take this project and claim it mine now, which I think is good. Like there's this there's this point like this point that when I decided this game was like no, this is like every, all of us is like all the, all the players are making this game happen, so I can't really like ever make a living of it. But it's one of I think it's one of the most exciting things I've ever done in in the term in the world of game design, and it never really, I mean, besides like Alexander and other like tech, text adventure lovers, I don't think it really seeps, seeps into indie community at all, but it touches people who, don't, who are not usually players. It touches like, we, there's like, a, we're, we're, we have a big community of, uh, of women who plays, who plays the game. There's a lot of like fiction readers and writers who join us. It's a scene that I've, I'm totally disconnected from, but getting in, being in touch with them really helped to build uh, my narrative for my, my music and all this kind of stuff. Like bringing people from different communities closer to me was like one of the best things I've done. So I think that will be that for now. I, I'd like, uh, maybe if you have some questions, we could like talk about some of, the, some of the projects. And if you have tried something similar to my time tracking, I would love to hear the way you've done it and if it failed or if it worked. I know some of you in here that also have their own and I think this is really interesting. So. Questions? Just, I had a question. Um, really loved everything on uh, on Paradise. You said something at the end that kind of struck me as interesting. You talked about um, monetizing Paradise, uh, which you can't do. But the thing that I found really interesting is you see it as something that is your creation. Um, so. Paradise itself does have ego attached to it in a very strange way. It's your ego. Is, well, it, is, there, do you, is there an irony there or is that like something that you are aware of and like explicitly created for that reason? Like, the, the first, the initial purpose of Paradise was to create a place where people, like, like to, was to create a tool that I would use to create my narrative. And I was like, this is gonna be my thing. And eventually I, I, I started adding people from RSC to let them add their own stuff, and then they did. And then I figured that was, I had more fun exploring other people's things than my own. So I kind of like took a step back and removed everything that, like all my, I guess the way I work and the visuals that I use has like a strong influence in the way people perceive what I do and the way they interact with me. So I tried to take that away as much as possible. So I removed all the visuals of the game. A lot of people ask me to like, oh, bring back the images, no, it's like, Taking that away was one of the best things because people could like, without images, people can be abs like, abs it's like absolute creativity. They're not limited by their skills. They can, if they can port like portray an image through text, that's like infinitely, infinitely defined. My, my concept of ego in paradise is almost completely gone. It has my URL website on the top now, but uh, that's pretty much it. The way I interact with people now, it's, only, it's not even through Alice Effect or it's, it's like, I'm trying to be this, just like another player, I, help, I, I try to help people around like other pe people's, people do. And uh, most of the time, people don't even know who I am on Paradise, and, and that's the best. 
Like, I don't want people to be uh, looking for the things I've done, or especially going through Paradise to contact me. And I think that's what, that, I, like, I think ego in Paradise is almost inexistent, even mine, so. Uh, uh, I'm actually the guy ask you about the Lokima page on Twitter. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, have a, I have a question for you. Uh, do you have any specific books, movies, or games that uh, are in inspiring you? Uh, yes, I do. I, I love to talk about that. I, didn't, I think I have a slide which I skipped, I skipped a bunch. I, have, I don't know how to make, to make talks, and I put 72 slides in there. So I was like, oh, I think I'm going to sp skip a few. Um, these are a bunch of books I like. So there's uh, Louis Bowles, who's a French writer that I, that I like a lot. Um, Berger, also, it, it's a lot of French stuff, I suppose, and Japanese stuff. Um, but I, I really like, um, uh, like uh, alchemy stuff. Like a lot of my um, inspiration comes from uh, romantic scientific. So it's people who don't really understand science, but they try to portray it in like, in, in the, this magical thing, like one of my favorite writers is uh, Fulcanelli. Uh, not Fulcanelli, well, Fulcanelli is kind of nice, but Flammarion is like a French writer who would look at the stars and like make up stories for why things work this way. And it's, while it's completely off most of the time, it's so good, it's, it's so good. Like, it's good fiction in some way, even though it didn't meant to be fiction. I, I, I like things like Flatland. Uh, I, I like some sci-fi, but I'm pretty picky. I like Borges. Like any, you know, Library of Babel stuff is really strong with, it's strong with language influences, which is a big thing of my work. Um, movies, I think, uh, well, my favorite movie is Solaris, so I'm not sure if that's really related. Well, it kind of is, I suppose. Like uh, movies like Lost in Translation, or like, I saw a Russian movie recently called uh, Kukushka, and it's, it's about the language and it's beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I want to I answer your Oh, I know, maybe later, but, uh, so one, at the end of one of my game, uh, there's, you finish the game, and it, it said, the game says, no, I mean, it, Okuni, it says there's no language, and it's like a, kind of like a puzzle adventure thing, and uh, the only three, the only Latin letters that are in the game, it's, uh, it's six letters, and it's a trauma word, and it's, I mean, if you see this, and then you go on the website, there's supposed to be a page that, like, gives you more insight on, like, What's the backstory of the game? And I took it out like a week ago, and I keep hearing like people to ask me to bring it back. But anyway, so if you're if you're stuck there, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope that, that answers your question. Um, this might come off as a bit offensive, but do you sometimes think that you're reinventing the wheel because some <laughs> of your tools? already exist in some other form, shape, but uh, alter just a little bit. How do you feel about that? I, I get that all the time, and I think I do. Like, uh, I hate using frameworks. I hate using plugins. Like, I, I do all the music I, I do. I, I never use VSTs or all that stuff. I, I rather build my own things from scratch using processing. You know, I'm the kind of game developers who people are like, it's like the stereotype of, it's like, oh, I'm gonna make a game, I'm gonna build an engine first for six months, and then, you know, <laughs> so, uh, but I think that's how I work and I love it. Like, I'm not gonna suggest it to anyone to do this, this sort of stuff, but the, the time tracking stuff, um, I often suggest people to make their own systems, and my idea behind that is that uh, taking the time to take the time, like, it, it has like a, a, an aspect to it of like, uh, you inject some of your 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 process into the the tools that you make and and for i don't know for 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 tracking time and building uh, uh, frameworks around you to improve yourself i think like it has to be some of your personality if you use trello or trello is fine for task tracking by the way but it's if you're going to use a, a toggle for t keeping your time I, I it's unless you're like like a san francisco startup middle-aged guy, it's maybe not applying for you. Like, I, I think if you're gonna make your own thing, you're gonna add some specific things that will make it all the more unique and all the more, like, uh, efficient for you. Like, for me, time, taking time to track my, 
my time, it, it has to be really quick. Every day I do it, and it can't, it, it can't be an asshole. I can't depend on the software to die after a year if the startup fails. Like, all of these reasons makes it so I want to build my tools all the time. But it's not offensive at all. And, and, but, I, like, I mean, it is reinventing the, the wheel, but making, inventing the wheel is fucking nice. So I, I end up creating some of my own tools every now and then. Is part of, of that, so part of, for me, part of creating things that already exist in, in my own way is very closely related to a eagerness to understand why things work and like sort of having like a systemic overview of life. I, I sort of feel like that reflects a bit in your talk. Well, I have a, I part have a point for this. Like, okay. um, I created a ton of programming language. <laughs> like one thing, I, like before I even knew how to program properly, I was like, oh, fuck this. I'm going to use my own programming language because, because these people don't know how to do it. And uh, <laughs> so I made all these shitty syntax heavy things. And then eventually, it would teach me one thing about programming every time. Like I would start one, and then eventually I'd be like, oh, shit, it's just like Perl. Oh, shit. Like, like, I realized that other people went through this process, but making this process is, uh, is awesome. And I think I would not have understood why lambdas are this way or blocks are this way with, like, without having gone through a process. You know, like, some people learn really well from abstracts. You, know, like, you go at school, people are like, oh, sin, cost, tan, they just, they just work. And then you, you'll, you'll take that and you'll, you'll go on with your life and you'll be fine with using them without really understanding how they work. But then like, the first time somebody told me that uh, you know, pi was like, I'm so sorry, but like, okay, so I'm not sure if some, you've seen somebody do that, but like, pi is basically like, if I take a, a circular thing and I draw a line here, and then I roll it for it's like this, it gives me like the, a ratio of pi, and I think like seeing things like this is really interesting. Not understanding, not understanding the, 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 the pillars of the tools, for me, it makes it really hard to use them. So, like building things also has this aspect of like self, like, like learning why people went through all this hassle to make programming language the way they are. I still don't understand why people use a, a, a semicolon, but. Mm. <laughs> or Lisp. <laughs> well, I tend to use a lot of existing stuff and modify it for my own uses. Is that something you do yourself? Like. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, taking something and completely taking it apart piece by piece, learning how it works, and then modifying it for your own uses. I, th I think like uh, the way I approached programming at first was like to dismantle forum platforms, you know, like PHP BB, and then you're like, oh, how can I change this image? And then you're like, you reverse engineering it. The way I'm doing radio now is kind of like th is this way as well. And I started to build, I tried to build a radio from scratch, and that was such a hassle. And I was like, fuck this. I'm gonna build, I'm gonna get a radio kit, and then Work downward, work downward, and this works as well. I mean, it's kind of like it, it's, it works in both direction. Once I'm all the way down to like the, the nuts and bolts, then I'll be like, oh well, it's, it's it would have been the same thing as going the other way, right? Don't use WordPress. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. I would say it's very impressive. Uh, I hope you don't mind this question, but how do you make a living? Uh, not the question that kills. No, no, but it's, it's a strange question. I get it all the time. And actually, I have no idea. But <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I live off uh, my small iOS sales, my, my music sales. My, uh, I get invited to do talks and things, and, and I live from... Um, very little, like I have a small f flat with my girlfriend, and we, we, the idea is that any day we could just move all of this in a boat. We have almost no possession, and since we move all the time, and uh, we cook everything, so we almost never eat out. So we, we brought our needs very low, so we could be happy, and like, in any moment I can just leave, and everything I have fits in a backpack, and that feeling is really important for us, and that makes possible for it to just kind of like, live off uh, like a minimum wage salary and be just fine. And getting to travel, meet, I mean, for me, what my main things in life is traveling, eating, craft beer, and uh, you know, programming, and that costs almost nothing.
Well, is that all? Oh, okay. Lorenzo. <laughs> I've been here all day. I'm the first one who arrived this morning at the venue. No, not really. And um, you're 228% too slow, by the way. Yeah, but it's okay. It's, I it's didn't okay. change it. I, I, I was like, maybe 30 minutes, but... It's good, it's good. No, you're perfect. And um, no, one question regarding the, uh, the, the tracking of your different uh, activities. So you, you mentioned you started doing this also so that you could uh, see the pattern and stuff. But uh, on a daily basis, uh, how does it work really? Uh, I mean, you wake up and you decide today, you feel like you're gonna do music okay. and you start and maybe you say, no, actually I should do something visual. How does it work like on a well, practical level? There's many aspects to it. Uh, I, I made a tool that tells me what I should be doing based on my previous pattern. So it suggests like, oh, I have this much chance of, like I'll be like this much productive if I do this thing rather than this thing or this thing. So it gives me like a bunch of choices. But the idea is that I don't listen to that. Like um, if I start following this, I kind of like just, I just validate the patterns and that puts me in a loop, right? So if I just listen to the software, then it's just kind of like, it's, it's useless because the idea is that it will keep, it'll be like, oh, I was right, and it will keep being right unless I prove it wrong. So every day I just do whatever I feel like doing. But like, if there are days where it's just not working, then I look at it and sometimes it's like, oh, fuck, right. You know, I've been doing uh, programming for seven days in a row, I should really be doing something else. And just like this realization and having a place where I can see why and how much that influenced my inefficiency, then that is its value. And seeing that is like, well, there's uh, somebody trying to, I was finishing my answer, but it's good. Ah, okay, Rami, ah, okay, Rami was. He, well, Rami. He, he paid, so he can, he can ask all the questions he wants. <laughs> we can do a keynote, do you, you want to do a panel with me? You can sit here and then we, we can talk about Next time we'll do a panel, that'll be fun. So, one final question but, uh, wait, wait. for me. Ra Lorenzo, I, I hope this answers your question. Otherwise, we can meet for beer later. And, yeah. <laughs> so, question, is, is your software human-centric or are you software-centric? Like. Which, which way around is it? <laughs> um, can you phrase this differently? Okay, so does your software, do you feel it's more that you work for software or your software works for you? I think I work for software. Like I'm kind of like following, I guess there's an aspect to everything that I do that is really kind of, um, I think this is uh, not really relevant, but that might answer your question in some way. Like, the, w the artist name that I use, like, Devin Lynn Vega is not actually my real name, but it's what I use everywhere. And it's not who I am. It's more like, it's a character that I took from a book that I wanted to, 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 wanted to be as a kid. And th this aspect is kind of like following something, like responding to something. So all my life, what I'm doing, all my artist work is to become that person that inspired me to as a, as a being, so uh, I think I am responding to software in some way. I'm like my all my time tracking things is is telling me who I should be, right, rather than who I am. So I'm just kind of like answering with my work. Like there's an aspect to procedural. Like when you start doing procedural generation stuff as an artist, it's interesting because you start you stop being like let's say you have to make a painting. There's a two way. You can you can learn how to paint and train your your hand to make a to, to make a mountain, or you could program a software that'll make you five thousand mountains, and then you choose the best the best one, and then that, I think that's more interesting. But that that has a strong implication as an artist because it's like oh no, you, as a human, the only task that you can that the only relevant the only relevancy of humans now is just to be this 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 person who can pick the nicest thing amongst amongst others, and uh, like, I think that's the, the seat I'm, I have right now with my, my work is like responding to AI and like computer stuff. I hope that answers this. Oh, there's one there, and uh, I'll be around all day if you wanna talk about like. <laughs> Can I use your time tracker tools and your presentation tools and take them apart and make something of my own? Uh, the, the code is on GitHub, so if you want to use okay. it. Uh, but I'm not, like many people ask me to make it, to open, well to make it so other people can register and use it. 
I rather people try to make their own than yes. use mine. All right, thank you very much.